Hey everybody, welcome back to quarantine day three, um, Art on the Go. I'm Megan and today we are going to spend some time making texture towers. And um, I had a blast sort of preparing this project because texture is one of the things that just makes art so fun. And um, today we're gonna to talk about the difference between real texture and implied texture and how artists use both of those. But before we jump into that, please make sure you have all the things that you need for success. So I recommend um, three pieces of just blank paper, two to three is good. Um, besides that, you're gonna need a black pen, something similar to this. If you have a thicker one, more of a felt tip, that's great. You'll love that even better in just a couple minutes. Um, I have a pair of scissors. I had to add that at the very end because I forgot, <laughs> so sorry. A pair of scissors is a must. And um, I would say smile, positive attitude. I think we got it going on. Awesome. Well, you're gonna take one piece of paper, just that blank piece of paper, and I'd like you to fold it in half like this. Sweet. Doesn't have to be anything too orderly. This is just to help us kind of divide up our spaces here, so nothing, nothing too crazy. And then once you have this divided in half, I'd like you to fold it in half again this way, hamburger style. I heard that's a term only used in the U.S. I haven't heard that outside of the U.S., but I think it's a good one. So, so far, I've got two folds. I've got folded in half this way, and I've got it folded in half this way. Now, from here, I'm going to leave it folded like this. And I am going to sneak it around the back and fold it in half again. So when we open the whole piece of paper back up, we should have eight little slots of paper. Divide it up like this. Magical. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, gorgeous. So from here, we're going to work on a couple different texture types and let me kind of walk you through them. I've got 13 that I brainstormed off the bat today, but there are a million more where these could come from. So I want to revisit those first two terms that we talked about when we started, real texture versus implied texture. For artists, we use both. Um, real texture is something um, you can actually feel. For example, sand. Um, something could look like it has grit, but sometimes artists either paint something to appear like it has texture, like the sand um, implied, or it actually would have a texture if you touched it. So today we are going to create implied textures on 2D surfaces because um, they're really fun. And also we don't have, if you're quarantining in your house, we can't go out and buy clay. So we are gonna just do the best with what we've got. So let's return to our paper and we'll start off with number one. I'm gonna pick this box up here in the corner and we'll start there. Grab your um, black pen, or if you prefer to work in pencil, that's fine too. And I'm gonna show you how to make the first texture, um, which I think is kind of fun. I call it reeds, um, R-E-E-D-S, like the plant. And what I love about this texture is it's very earthy. You really can't make a mistake because um, all the lines are kind of scribbles anyway. So let me show you what I mean. Awesome, so we're starting in this first box. You can pick wherever you would like to start. And I'm gonna start at the very bottom of my box and I'm kind of gonna create swooping lines like this, like a plant kind of going upwards. Let me show you close up, just the beginning here, like that. Cool. Hi, Morgan, welcome. Sweet. So from here, I am gonna take this, this sort of baby plant and I'm gonna grow it. Kind of gonna create more scribbles like this that go up and continue until you've created a whole line like that. Should look um, kind of like those plants that maybe you've seen in movies before or something. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna fill the greater portion of this first, this first box. So take a minute and do that with me. Awesome, so I'm gonna keep kind of wiggling my way up here with this reed plant. It's pretty therapeutic if you keep going. Awesome, so once I have one full line done, I'm gonna jump over to the bottom and I'm gonna start again on the next one. And it's okay if the reeds touch. This one's got a little more loops than I'm used to. <laughs> I like this one. Cool. So from there, I'm gonna do probably two or three rows. They don't take too long. If you're still working on starting that first row, remember that the line should go in, up in between all the plants, kind of connecting them. If it helps you envision like a whole line of like Christmas lights, 
Imagine those are plants and you're just kind of stringing them together. Awesome. We'll keep going here. Lovely. I love how loud this, <laughs> this pen sounds. It's kind of fun. Cool. So I'm going to finish this last line here and then we'll jump into box number two. You can always go back and fill in the rest of the box, but for the purpose of our video today, we probably only need to fill it in halfway. Dividing it up just helps our brain out. Awesome, so here is what I'm ending with for box number one. This is called Reads. Sweet. If you've made it so far, everything else is within reach. We are set, this is box number one. Cool, we're gonna jump over to box number two. This one, ironically, is called boxes. This is what I do whenever um, I have space on a notebook or um, yeah, space to spare pretty much anywhere. I'm always drawing these boxes. So if you sit by me somewhere and we're listening to a lecture, you're probably like, oh, I know this one. So for my students, this one's totally new to you. Um, even though you are texture wizards, you might like this one. Okay, so we're in box number two. Let me show you a little bit how boxes work. So I'm gonna start really in any corner, but I'll start over here just so that I can work my way towards the camera here. And I'm just simply gonna draw a box and outline it a little bit, little bit sort of sketchy-like. And then I'm gonna take a box and I'm gonna overlap them so that it's as if you could see through them with an x-ray machine. I'm gonna keep joining these boxes together until I kind of create this little web of boxes. Notice that some of my boxes are tall, some are short, some are stout, but I'm trying to keep them in a similar scale so nothing looks too out of the, out of the set. So, as you can probably guess, we're gonna fill in uh, about halfway, halfway um, on box number two. So, while we're doing this, um, question of the day for my students who are watching this and or pals from abroad. Um, the question of the day is, would you, <laughs> would you rather wear shoes made of duct tape or a jacket made of duct tape for the next entire month straight? Let me know in the comments and we'll see who wins. Keep, keep drawing those boxes. I love these because you really can't mess up and it's very therapeutic. They also have this sort of like edgy texture to them and I really like that. Let's see, what do we think? Nothing yet. Let me know what you prefer. Duct tape shoes, duct tape jacket, it's all up to you. I think right off the bat, I would probably have to say Maybe a jacket because at least then I would be warm. That's all I got. I feel like shoes would kind of hurt your feet after a while. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, the great thing about these boxes is it kind of it kind of leads you through the paper. So if you're just catching up with us, we're in box number two, and we are on. Sorry, I used the right hand. We're um, doing a type of texture called boxes, uh, where you simply connect boxes, kind of sketched in a rough kind of cartoon-like way and connect them until they fill up the space. Awesome. Okay. My pen is incredibly loud. I feel like I should like throw on some music so you're not like listening to <laughs> listening to this whole sound the whole time, but awesome. I've got some family joining me from Chicago today. They're watching. That's a joy. Hi guys. And um I got some of my students on here too. Absolutely love. I miss you today. Cool. So I'm rounding out the last of this little box adventure here, filling in box number two. Hopefully you're doing well. I love this one. I could do this all day. All day. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. I think you might go a little crazy, but I think it's the best one so far. Cool. All right, so I just about wrapped up about halfway over box number two. Again, this is called boxes. This is a type of texture and pattern making that we're working on today. So far, if you're just catching up with us, we're really only using a pen and we've divided this paper into eight sections um, just to kind of help us track with where we are. Um, again, this is box number two and it's called boxes. Awesome. You can probably guess where we're gonna go. Box number three. Let's do it. This is called cross hatching. And if you were to Google texture for artists, this is probably one of the first methods that would show up. And essentially cross hatching is a way of demonstrating um, where surfaces are rounded and um, the type of depth and light that hits. 
Um, so a lot of artists use this. Um, if you see those classic drawings of like a sphere, often they're using cross hatching on the corners and their edges to kind of demonstrate where the shadow of the light falls off the form. So we're gonna use this just to sort of fill up space. I love cross hatching because it reminds me of windows in like comic strips. I think it's really fun. So let me show you a little bit about how to do that and then you can go on your own and make a couple choices because cross hatching, there's a lot of different ways you could go. Okay, so box number two. We are gonna start by creating a series of lines all in a row like this. And I'm gonna go all the way across my box um, horizontally, but you can do it however you'd like to. Now, I'm gonna show you the close-up so you can kind of see. If you'd like to vary the width, you're definitely welcome to. If you wanna keep them close together like mine, no problem. Then I'm gonna slide my, my paper diagonal from me and I'm gonna to continue to draw towards myself. I always tell my students, if you start with a line, you always wanna to draw towards yourself because it will 95% of the time be straighter than if you were to draw away from yourself. So when we draw, we always start with a pencil away and it comes close to us. So we have our paper diagonal. And I'm gonna start with this very corner and I'm gonna draw towards myself, contrary to those lines, at an angle like this. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add a couple in between those so it's a little bit more detailed. You can if you want to, you could leave them a little more open. This is where you have a lot of freedom, which is very nice. And I'm gonna continue all the way through this box. If they overlap, that's okay. They don't need to be perfect. I'm not going for a graph, but it will probably look like a graph that kind of got smushed, which is kind of fun. Sweet. So this is box number three. This is called cross hatching. And this is where I'm at so far. We've got those three samples of texture and pattern. Great. Moving right on. This next one is super fun. It's called lines, pretty basic. Um, but there are a lot of different ways that lines can represent themselves. So we can do lines that have attitude and respond to each other, or we can have lines that intersect and go their own way. For this series of lines, these lines are gonna be responsive. Um, and what I mean by that, <laughs> I want you to imagine a room full of people, full of people, which is exactly where you don't want to be right now, but imagine, a time when that was true. And um, let's say you're at this corner of the room and you've got to go all the way to this side. What you're going to do is we run the people, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, all the way to that other corner. But in order to do that, you don't get to walk in a straight line. You have to kind of like wiggle and like edge around people, right? So for this series of lines, these lines are going to respond to each other. Let me show you an example. So we're jumping over to box number four, and I'm gonna, again, start with my pen away from me, and I'm gonna draw a line sort of straight, but has a little bit of wiggle towards myself like this. That sounds good. Now, every other line is gonna excuse me, pardon me, around this line. This line is kind of our anchor. So however, whatever shapes, whatever bumps that line has, that is your model, and you're gonna follow it. So especially if you're in one of my classes, remember that art, when we make an art piece, the other pieces in the specific art, uh, let's say we're all on, we're on a 2D surface like we are right now on the paper, other forms or other lines or shading, they all want to reflect a relationship. So one thing we talk about in my class is do the other forms know that they're there? Do, do these lines on this side know that there are squares over here? Or do these shapes over here know that these lines over here are organic instead of geometric? So for these lines, we are gonna do just that. We're gonna show that relationship. So I'm gonna start over here in this corner and I'm gonna draw my, draw my line towards myself, following this line, excuse me, pardon me, all the way to the other corner. And I'm filling in the whole box for this one just because it's a little bit easier to see. Um, and then you can branch out from both sides. And what you'll find is this line starts to become a little bit different as you work your way around. I am kind of just going for it pretty quickly and I find that the way that it responds ends up being more interesting than maybe what I, the line I even started with, which I think is very cool. So, or excuse me, pardon me, in, that's now a verb, okay. Um, the reason I teach art, not English maybe. Um, but we've got these lines, they're all responding to each other. If you can keep them about the same width apart, you'd be thrilled, but you don't have to. You can get a little bit of variety in there. Awesome. I'm gonna keep going. 
as you're working, I think you'll find your lines start to kind of wiggle. It's almost like a, a type of mapping. I believe it's a topical mapping. I have to go back and check. Awesome. And when you've got up a little bit over half of the box filled in, you can either put your pen down and shake your hand because your hand's exhausted, or you can be um, a total champion and finish the rest of the box if you'd like to. Great. And I'm just going to keep, excuse me, pardon me, around these lines until I get to this corner and these start to get a little bit straighter, which is totally fine. So, so far, this is what I have. Should look like a very organic form. Not a ton of my lines have a lot of stark edges or anything super geometric. But that's what we've got so far. I might add one or two more lines over here, and then we'll jump down to box number five. This is a texture workout. So um, what I love about, about textures is that they all kind of have a certain mood or attitude to them. And I love that they have kind of have that power. I think that's really interesting and a really great way to add interest to artwork. Um, where you might not have thought to put it before. Okay, so we grabbed a few more lines. This looks good. Again, this one we're just calling lines. And this is box number four. You're halfway there, you did it. Look at this, this is awesome. All right, jumping down to box number five. Sweet, so this one we are gonna snag from our mandala unit if you were with me on, what was it, Monday? Um, on Monday, we're gonna snag some skills from that and we are gonna do spirals. Spirals are really awesome because they show a congestion of space. So they help us, um, sometimes they communicate busyness or dizziness if you were to see them drawn in the cartoons or on TV. Um, of course, there's like the natural landform or um, natural weather pattern of like a tornado or maybe wind, right? So they can have a lot of different connotations, but spirals are really fun. For me, they just kind of represent energy bouncing around. So we're gonna put some energy into the box number five. All right, I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see a little bit closer. I'm gonna start in the corner, and just like we did on mandalas, I'm gonna kind of huddle these spirals together in a line. And again, we're gonna fill in about half of the box here. And you'll see why at the very end, why we needed about half of the box filled in. Now, as you kind of keep going, be sure to fill in these spirals enough where they've kind of um, have dominion over the space that they're in, but you don't have to put them exactly in a sort of grid or line. It's good just how they are. Awesome. I'm about a third after this guy. Awesome. If you're at if you're at the school I'm teaching at right now, you've made it halfway through the week. Going online is real different than what we're used to, so I'm very proud of you all for braving braving the storm here. If you're in the States, I know a lot of schools have closed. I hope you are being safe. Awesome. So that's about all I'm gonna do for this box. Again, this is called Spirals, and this is box number five. I'll give you a close-up in just a second. That's what I've got so far. Everybody still with me? We're rocking out. Spirals, spirals, spirals. And again, you can do these at any any diameter that you would like to. Um, you could do, I don't even know, maybe 12 bigger spirals if you wanted to. I like the small ones personally, but you can do any type that you'd like. Okay, moving on to number six. Um, we are gonna do, I call this one cracks in the pavement. And this is a fun texture because similar to boxes, the forms kind of bounce around from each other. So let me show you a little bit of what I mean by that. Again, we're in box number six. We're right over here. And I'm gonna just kind of create different shapes and I'm gonna never pick my pen off the paper. I'm gonna use this line and I'm gonna create forms like this and sort of let everything loop together. like this. Again, it could look totally different than this. It could look, I don't know, it depends what type of lines you like to do. Um, so I'll pick up my pen so I can show you what I have so far. Totally random. This is pretty um, geometric. I'm trying to keep my lines really straight. Um, but again, I'm not picking up my pen from the paper at all when I'm drawing this. I'm just kind of connecting boxes um, for my elementary schoolers, we just learned what shapes are. We learned that shapes, right, they're flat, 
contained spaces. So I have taken these shapes and I've ripped them apart and I'm connecting them together. So you don't have to think about completing a full shape. You can just kind of let them be open and all be friends. Okay. Let's keep going. Fill in about half of the box. I'm going to start on this side since this side needs a little bit of love. Cool. So again, I call this one cracks in the pavement. You could call this geometric doodle, whatever you'd prefer, but this is box number six. Give you a minute to catch up with me here. Cracks in the pavement. Forgot to write my title. Awesome. Lovely. We have two boxes left. If you've made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back. Shake your hand out. You've made it. You're doing great. <laughs> okay. Um, we are going to do, I call this next one raining lines, which, oh, they're so fun. And they're so easy, so you're gonna love them. Let me show you box number seven. So I'm gonna take my pen, again, starting away from my body, and I'm not gonna draw to myself. I'm gonna start with my pencil, or my pen, I'm gonna drop it, do a couple dots, and drag this line towards me, kind of like this. I think about it as, um, it looks very similar to when raindrops maybe fall off your window, like that. Okay, and you can do varying. Um, thicknesses when I apply more pressure to my pen it kind of creates a different sort of environment for these lines and they kind of take up a different type of space sometimes there are dots sometimes there are longer lines it's totally up to you I represent I, I would recommend doing a little bit of variety so this is what I have so far I call this raining lines I'm gonna do a couple more and maybe fill in a couple of the spaces that I missed there A little bit over halfway here. I love these ones. They're so calming. Yeah, the variety really comes in clutch with these lines. So this is box number seven. Raining lines. I also made up some of the names for these because everybody doodles differently. So if you're looking these up later and you're like, I cannot find cracks in the pavement, it's because I made it up. Okay. So again, box number seven, raining lines. That's sort of what it looks like. Horizontally, it kind of reminds me of um, the, the lines in the middle of the road, the yellow ones. Those are pretty fun. Um, but looking back, it often creates some sort of, um, almost like a gradient across your page, which adds a lot of visual interest when you're drawing. Okay, y'all, we've made it to box number eight. You are all champions. This one is just a classic, and I am excited to tell you about it because Plaid is possibly one of the most popular prints. It's been around forever. And um, you can do a lot of really awesome things with plaid. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, again, we're in box number eight, if you're jumping in with us. So similar to raining lines, I'm gonna start with my pencil or my pen away from me, drag a line towards me. I'm gonna keep this these first couple lines um, full lines. I'm not gonna pick up my pen like I did before. I'm gonna drag them all the way towards me dividing up this box into to lines kind of like this. They don't have to be perfectly straight, although if you want to get a ruler out, all the power to you. Um, and then from there, I'm going to draw lines in between them that are a little bit thicker. So these are going to require just a little bit more time and attention. Again, if you have a thicker marker, this would be a great time to pull it out. I left my markers at school, so we are going to make shift some thick lines, but I think it adds a little character too, so do not fear if you're like me making these lines here. Again, um, I'm not following any specific pattern or order from right to left. I'm simply just adding thicker lines in there wherever it kind of seems right. In a regular plaid pattern, I would be super organized about it, but today I'm just feeling like being a little spontaneous, so we'll go with that. Awesome. So, John, I'm going to fill in about two-thirds of this box like we've been doing and then I'm gonna add a couple lines of interest so I'm gonna pull in some of these raining lines amid some of these straight and thick full lines I'll show you what I mean
Awesome. So in this way, I'm creating a whole plaid pattern coming towards me. And um, it's not perfect, but it's got a lot of character and I think that's really fun. So here's what I've got so far. If you're catching up with me, again, we're layering these three types of lines all together. I like mine, they're really messy in this one, but you know what, that's okay. It's kind of the kind of day it is, I guess. Now, we're gonna take our page and we are gonna turn it perpendicular to ourselves, which means the lines are going like this. They should be parallel to the table if you are um, working on a hard surface like that. Again, taking my pen, starting away from my body and drawing towards me, I'm gonna drag lines that, like actually, I can fold this, this would be great, then I can show you closer. So, taking lines that start at the very edge of my plaid pattern and draw them towards myself. Again, I'm gonna divide up my page, similar to what I did before. Like this. Cool. Now, same thing, add variety in lines. So I'm gonna add a couple lines that are thicker, a couple lines that are thinner. Let's skip a couple. Maybe I'll add a double right here just for fun, right? Got all sorts of textures going on. Cool. I'm gonna add some more raining lines now. We're gonna kind of weave those in here. So starting again from away from you, taking my pen, dragging it towards me, looking at my pen at intervals to give it a little bit of visual interest. If it wiggles, that's okay. Cool. So now I am left with a plaid pattern that looks like this. It's kind of scratchy. It almost looks like somebody maybe scraped it into a wall or something. It's got a lot of really fun character. Um, so again, this is box number eight. We're just calling this plaid like the typical pattern used for textiles. Plaid number eight. Awesome. We are left with a gorgeous variety of textures and patterns. Um, wow, so fun. I love doing that. What a blast. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna teach you how to make that tower we talked about. So this is a good time to grab out this second piece of paper that you had hiding and set this to the side because um, we are gonna use this to kind of understand and kind of be the, the foundation where these textures are going to go. So um, the reason I want you to look at it is because spatially you might wanna line a couple of things up depending on um, what kind of tower you would like to have. So um, now is a good time to grab out those scissors. Um, we're gonna start in box number one and I'm just gonna have you cut out a box that contains all of the texture sample that you drew. So by the end, this paper is gonna be in eight or nine different pieces and that's totally okay. So I'm gonna start with um, box number one. I'll show you how I cut out the reeds and then you can do that with each of the boxes here. So I'm gonna just start at the very bottom and I want to make sure the boxes that I'm cutting, the texture goes all the way to the edge. If I let white space kind of go on the edge, it kind of ruins the illusion of the fun texture and you want your box to be filled with all of the energy that you just put into these drawings. So make sure you do it justice by letting those textures spread themselves all the way to the board, very border of that box. So we're going here, I'm gonna cut all the way up and I just cut this corner off like this. Next, I'm going to, I wanna make sure you can actually see this, here we go. Okay, sweet. So. I'm gonna cut off the top of my sweet little plant, honeys, and I'm gonna cut off to the side like this. Notice your box will look like that. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna straighten one of my lines because that'll bother me, but if it doesn't bother you, no sweat. Okay, cool. So you're gonna have a bunch of these scraps over there. So this is the first box that we have. What we're gonna do is set this aside and then I'll show you um, how we're gonna make these tower pieces all fit together. So do the same thing with box number two for boxes and cut out a box again with that texture spreading all the way to the border. You work so hard, so you might as well have a box that contains as much of the work that you did within it. Again, here's a sample before I cut off the top edge. It kind of sometimes ruins the illusion of the texture if you have that white space. So a good, a good example. Um, of why we want to make sure that texture goes to the very edge like that. So there's my two samples. Again, box number one, box number two. These are where we're at. Do the same thing with box number three. This is going to be obviously a different shaped rectangle box. They can, they can be shapes of literally any size. Um, but I recommend rectangles. If you want to go crazy, do triangles or something else geometric. 
all the power to you. Um, but for the purpose of my tower, I think I'm going to leave them as rectangles or squares. Cool. So box number three, going to cut all the way through this one. This one's going to be a tall and skinny rectangle. This one's going to be fun. Oh, I like this one already. Cross hatching just makes the whole space feel understood. Look at how fun that looks. So I've got all of these fun forms. And again, with that texture spilling off the sides, it really does feel concrete. It feels like um, the entire paper, if you were to stretch it out, it would go forever and this pattern would just continue. And that is exactly the illusion that we want. Okay, I've got three boxes done. Maybe you're at two or maybe you're at three or maybe you're even ahead of me at four. Um, I'm gonna do box number four now. Awesome. This one especially looks so great when those textures go off the borders. How fun does that look? Kind of reminds me of um, patterns you find in rocks maybe when you go hiking or something. Moving on to box number six. Gonna get those spirals cut out. These ones especially lose energy if the texture doesn't go to the edge. So be sure if you're gonna heed any of my, any of my teaching now is the time. Oh yeah, look at how fun that looks. That's just a whole box full of energy right there. Love it. Okay, box number six. Let me get some of this cut out, a little sample for my tower. Awesome. Here's box number six. Some of these rectangles are ended up being longer. You do want a variety of them. I highly recommend that. It keeps, it keeps your tower full of um, fun interests besides the textures that you have. I'm moving on to box seven and box eight, but I'll leave you some time in just a minute if you need a couple seconds to catch up. This one I'm not gonna fill the whole box, but this is what we got so far for that one. I think that one looks fun. And then plaid, I think I'm gonna do a huge box for plaid, because why not? That one took forever. Cool. I love how these patterns sort of become um, like a whole style of their own. It's really a blast to see what they turn out to look like. So again, I have cut out um, a little sampling of each of the textures here on my paper. This, um, you can recycle, I recommend doing that. Or if you decided, oh, I just want more textures, here is the bonus option I have for you. Um, if you live in Spain, you're probably wearing shoes inside your house right now. So turn over your shoes and see what cool textures on the bottom of your shoe. If you have any leftover paper, put it on top of your shoe and drag your pen over it and see what type of texture that you get. If you have a pencil, this might work even better than my pen. Although this is kind of turning out, it's kind of cool. Just dragging my pen across it like this. And I'm kind of getting this sort of like wavy, you can almost see the pattern at the bottom of my shoe, super cool. So that's a bonus block if you want one. Again, if you want to stick with eight, that's awesome. I'm gonna cut this out into a little baby block, because why not? It's like Christmas, it's extra, cool. I got a couple other textures here to do a couple little samples of while I'm waiting for a couple of us to, um, to work on. I have this whole spool of thread that my friend Emily gave me. So I'm gonna put this underneath one of these and we'll see what texture comes out if I drag my pen over this. I get this whole mountain. It's giving me like a cool ridge. That's really fun. Okay, so you can see these all sorts of rubbings. These are called, yeah, they're called rubbings basically. Um, you'll probably remember doing these sometime in the fall time if you live somewhere where the leaves change. I'm gonna cut out a little sample here. This one's a really baby one, uh, but I like just ones that have a little bit of a different, different edge to them. It kind of keeps, keeps it interesting. Okay, so I hope you're with me. We've got our boxes all cut out. We've got these samples and we're ready to go. Now is a good time to grab a scratch piece of paper that you don't mind getting messy. So for me, I worked on a sample for this earlier. So I have this piece of paper, which I have marks and glue on. Um, what I'd like you to do is grab one of the sample boxes that you have, 
to put it face up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back with a pen or a marker, whatever you have. Now would be a good time if you do have a black marker that has a thicker tip, this is where you are just gonna fly ahead of me because we are gonna draw around the entire border of the, of the, um, of the tower, the blocks. And um, in that way, we'll get these blocks to kind of um, behave as friends when we put them together. So we've got that texture all the way to the border so that um, when we draw this line, everything kind of comes together. These lines don't have to be perfect, but again, I'm drawing a border just like this. I'm going to repeat this, as you can probably imagine, on all of the sides. All the sides. And we'll keep moving our way around here. If you have a black marker, you're probably on to block number six. <laughs> um, so good. You can have a, a little bit of variety in width if you would like to. For those of you that don't live in Spain, like some of the people watching and like I do, um, we are our third day into quarantined living. Um, the illusion of being fun and inside is definitely worn off for me, but um, here I'll show you the sample. Up front, that's what we've got. We've got this nice black border around the sides. I kind of left my border lines a little bit messier to kind of match the attitude inside the squares. Um, so yeah, we we are gonna do the same thing with the rest of these squares up here. We uh, have school online today and um, have been continuing to uh, to teach, which has been which has been a joy, but I think I mentioned this in the last one. I definitely prefer my students in person. They are so fun. They also have the best jokes. I they, I can never come up with always like good jokes. They always do. Okay, I'm gonna keep sketching around here. Now's a good time to turn to whoever you're with and tell them your answer to the duct tape question because um, I don't know. Anybody who's going to wear a duct tape jacket maybe for the rest of, of the month, if, hypothetically, you know, they got a little bit of gut. You can maybe give them a giggle or something. There's that. We're two in, rocking out. Here's when I'm missing my Sharpie markers from the States. We don't have Sharpies here. They printed markers, but not Sharpies. There's just something nice about a Sharpie, huh? Okay, this is the Adidas block, <laughs> the bottom of my shoe, cool, so we're, there we go, great, grab another block, again, going to get that black border around there, it's going to help these blocks behave like friends, often in my art classes we talk about how we can get our artwork and the different pieces in our art to, to be friends, to, to kind of work together like teammates, and um, one of those ways is by giving them a very similar visual language. And so if you keep your lines consistent or um, colors consistent, that's one of the ways you can help your artwork behave as friends. Fabulous. Okay. This plaid one especially looks great with these lines around the border. Looks good. Did anybody try any cool texture rubbings? Do you have any cool ideas that I don't see? If you've thought of something cooler to do a texture of for your bonus block, type it in the comments so I can take some ideas from you and learn from you. Awesome. Great. Okay, a couple more blocks in. We're looking really, really good. My auntie is watching this. This is great. Oh my goodness. I love that. Hello, hello. The amount of people that have said they've been doing these videos at work has, has been making me smile because I love that. I would love if I got to do this at work. I mean, I do, but not all day. You have to grade and stuff, you know, when you're a teacher but I would prefer to just hang out and draw students all day if I could. Okay, 
We're moving on. We've got just a couple blocks left. If you're losing stamina, do not. The tower is worth it. I think it looks so cool. If you're an adult and you're wondering what you're going to do with that tower, I've also got an idea for you. So hang on with me and keep those borders going. Okay. Great. Great, great, great. Adding a couple more borders. These are looking really good. I like to think of this texture project as like going into a donut store and you get the box that has like all of the different donuts and you don't get to pick them, but it's kind of like a mystery. That's kind of what this project is. You get a variety of textures. You don't know exactly what they're going to be, but you know that they're probably all delicious, right? Same thing. I think I have donuts in my mind because my small group leader from church started a donut shop and uh, when when it started um, it kind of became an instant hit and they they posted today that they could do deliveries and I was like mm, to Spain please I would love that so if anybody's in the Minneapolis area go get some yo-yos donuts before everything closes before everything closes go 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 they have mystery boxes and they're delicious Okay, y'all, we are in the home stretch for three under. There we go. Great, we're getting borders on these boxes. If you have a marker, you are done, <laughs> probably. But that's okay. Growing impatience is also a good thing. If anything, People in quarantine have an abundance of right now it is time so here we go awesome again drawing black borders if you're just joining us and you're catching up to where we are in the video um, we've created eight different texture examples we've made little samplings and now we're drawing black borders around each of these samples Great. My mom is here. Oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Hi, mom. She knows the good donut place I'm talking about. At least somebody gets it. Somebody gets it, what I miss. Okay. Y'all, we are doing fabulous. This texture tower is coming together. We've got all of our pieces almost in place here creating that border so that they all again have that same visual language we've talked about. Right. Awesome. Super cool. So second to last box. Again, we're getting that black border around it. I'm keeping mine all about the same, the same width. Great. Okay, so the next step we're gonna do is kind of like a puzzle and it's gonna look different for all of us. We are gonna start arranging these shapes so that we can create a tower of texture on that paper that you have um, on the side right over here. And um, this is so that we can kind of play around with the boxes before we decide to put them down with a little bit of glue. Um, I've got a glue stick over here I'm gonna use, but you can use whatever you'd like. You can even use tape. Oh my goodness, I feel like I deserve a tiara. I just got through with all those boxes, praise Jesus, woohoo! So we've got um, these samples of all those textures we just rocked out at. And now we're gonna go into, again, that puzzle portion that we talked about just now. So let me show you my paper and let me show you a little bit of what I mean by that. If we were in my classroom, what I would do is put these all on the wall and we would have magnets and we would arrange them in all different ways. So this time, as, as you're kind of arranging these boxes, this is the time to make all the mistakes now because once you glue them down, they don't come back up very easily. So I'm gonna start by taking some of the biggest boxes because these hold the most visual weight. So for me, 
um, the ones that are biggest will line them up from smallest, biggest to smallest. Maybe that's a good way to do it. These guys are just, they're fighting. These ones are tallest, but they're not necessarily the biggest. So line these up. Great. So we've got a lot of different boxes here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose two boxes that are the biggest. I'm going to set those as the basis for my two towers. Um, so I'm going to move these boxes to the side here. I'm going to start with these two boxes as my base. And I'm going to do them facing you so that you can see exactly what I mean by that. So these two are going to be the base towers, the ones that hold all of the textures and all of the energy that we just put into all these boxes. These boxes are going to be the base for that. Next, I'm going to go to my medium sized boxes. These are the ones very close by. And I'm going to take these three boxes. I'm going to decide which ones contrast the best with the two that I have here. So for example, in my class, we talk about the difference between, so I'm going to move the camera back so you can see me, um, between uh, lines that are organic versus lines that are geometric. And for the purpose of this project, we want to pair opposing ones together so that we have a variety throughout our entire tower. So I'm going to show you what choice I'm going to make, and that might help you as you are making yours. So this form is naturally organic because these lines are all swooping. They're kind of connected in really fun and frivolous ways. So I'm going to pick to pair this with this form because these are a little bit more organized. So I'm going to put this on top of that tower. I'm not going to put it directly on top because I like to be on edge a little bit, but you can do whatever you would like. Next, I'm going to pick one of my next two boxes to be a contrasting box with the other base of my, of my texture tower. So what I'm going to do, um, let's decide. I think these two might be a little bit too similar, but I think these two, they really contrast well. So I'm going to stack this one on top of this guy. Now I've got, I've got, whoa, I've got, how many boxes do I have left? One, two, three, four, five, and then six little baby ones. But depending on if you did any, any rubbings, you're going to have um, eight, eight to, um, eight more, depending on how many you did. Um, I'm not doing math very well on the fly here, but that's all right. So again, the same rule applies. Take the top box, pick an opposing form based on the boxes that you do have, and, um, and then pair it and stack it on top of your tower. So with this box, I've been left with, uh, geometric forms. So I want to pick something that's a little bit more organic to go on top. Now, I might choose to put zip, well, maybe not. Let's play a little bit. Let's play around a little bit with puzzle pieces here. So I like this one because these lines are going diagonal and these ones are the rain lines and they're going horizontal. So I might choose those to go up here, even though these could be classified as geometric. I like them because they contrast with where the energy is going in each of these boxes. We'll try it there. Might move it around in a minute, who knows. Now, going to this one, I'm gonna pick something a little bit more structured after this box because this one is organic. So let's try, maybe I'll try this one. And I'll put this one on the corner there. Whoa. Could even choose to connect these here. That'd be kind of fun. Let's try that. Get these towers in there. Cool. So I've got textures and towers built. I see a couple comments. Everybody doing okay? We're doing all right. Awesome. So I've got four more boxes left to choose from. I got my math right. <laughs> Four more boxes. If you have eight, you should only have two left. Um, and we're going to start by, again, pairing, pairing opposing boxes, organic versus geometric lines. So these ones are very organic. They are budding into each other. They follow no real system. So I'm going to pick to pair these with something that's a little bit more structured. Now, in this tower, we started with something similar. So maybe I'll try pairing these together and see if I can get away with it. Let's try that. Cool. Now this one, we decided it's a little bit more organic, so I'm gonna pair this with something more structured. We'll try this. I kind of like how all these are coming together. Your tower is probably gonna look a little bit different than mine, and that is great. A little variety is always good. Awesome, so if you can see, I might move, move this to above for just a moment. Can you see that a little bit better? There we go. So we're connecting these towers, these texture towers together. I've got two more boxes, so I'm going to add these in. You don't need to feel like you have to. Maybe I'll do it this way. Maybe this way. Throw it on top. Why not? And then this guy, it's like a little hat. <laughs> a little hat on the top of this building. I love it. Great. So 
this is where I'm gonna come in if you are an adult and you're thinking, I'm not sure I want a textured tower in my home. So you're not, I've got another idea for you. Um, I created some stationery with these textured little bits, which I think are really fun. So you can do it something similar to this on a card if you wanted to. Um, you could do it on a piece of paper and you could just put it up on your wall, whatever you prefer. I did this one a couple minutes ago and I did the box. It's just a little bit smaller in scale, but I thought it was a great idea and a fun way to beef up your stationery collection in the midst of these, what, 15 days home alone if you're in Spain. <laughs> So you can pick whatever idea works best for you. Um, for the purpose of this project, I'm going to keep going with the tower I have here. But again, if you are somebody who wants to do something a little bit more, um, a little bit different than what this project represents, you can go for it and do it on this. And you can share your texture with somebody else. So fun. So I'm going to grab my glue stick now. And because I have a set idea for this texture tower, I'm again going to start working from the base all the way up because nothing is worse than starting at the top of a tower and the base not fitting. So we'll start there. This is where your scratch piece of paper is going to come into handy, um, come in handy because we want to make sure we get glue all the way to those edges. Let me show you this gluing method um, that I particularly love. I go around all of the borders first using my finger and then I kind of squiggle in the middle, let it stick to my glue stick and then I'm going to put it down. Make sure that it fits to the very bottom of the page. That helps the illusion of the towers holding something up. And then again, making sure you get your fingers um, around all of the borders like this so that this block, this block is not going anywhere, anywhere at all. Okay, so I'm going to take my next block. I'm going to work on one tower first and then work onto the other tower because it might be a little bit difficult to do them in tandem. So I'm going to take this next block again, follow the same gluing principle over here. We're going to do lines all the way around, fill it in, stick it, and pull it up. Sounds good. Great. I'm going to leave a little space in between my blocks and I'll show you a close up when I can lift up my paper without blocks flying everywhere. Um, and I'm going to leave the same width in between all the blocks as I'm doing it. That helps us know that um, these block blocks all have a similar relationship. I, if I were to vary them, that's when you might feel like, oh, is the tower falling? I'm not entirely sure. Is it stable? Right? So if we keep that same relationship of space between each of the blocks, that's going to help us continually keep this whole structure together. For the, for the audience member. I mean, we as artists always know that our, that our art is going somewhere. But for somebody watching, they might not be so sure. So I'm going to keep this block. Again, I'm going to line these two lines up. Get this glue stick action going. Again, trace that perimeter, that box, fill in the middle, stick it, pull it up. Pay attention to direction. So um, if some of these patterns end in a certain way. You want to make sure that those patterns stay the same as you um, as you glue them down. I almost just rotated this one on accident, so don't do what I did. And just make sure you're keeping all the patterns consistent here. I'm going to pull up this next block. Again, we're going to keep that same relationship of block to block. Get some glue on here. Perimeter. There we go. And let it stick. Pull it up. Again, I'm gonna keep this whole line straight. Actually, I might move this guy over just a little bit. That might change over there, but I kind of like that change. Cool. And then this guy is gonna be up here, but he might fit the top. I might have to move him over, over this way because he's already a little bit taller than I expected. So I'm gonna pull this over. Again, get this whole thing glued. This one's so little. I'll center him, actually. Great. Great, great, great. So now I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna pull these over so that you can see the spatial, 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 the spatial relationships between my blocks. So if this is helpful for you. So this is the texture tower that I have so far. Again, you'll notice that these blocks, now that they're glued together with that similar space relationship between each of them, you really start to believe that they go together, which I think is what's so awesome about this project. So I'm gonna go back, finish that other tower and get these guys glued down. Okay, get this guy glued. I'm gonna keep these a little bit separate. I'm gonna to try to keep the relationship to the side of the paper the same. So if you notice, I have about this much space over here and about this much space over here. The space in the middle is where they meet and I'm gonna 
Keep that consistent. Again, pressing all the way down, getting to the perimeter so these boxes stay really steady on our paper. Okay, now here's when the fun happens and you get to see how your planning went because um, now the box aren't going to move. Um, for this one, remember to keep the reeds with uh, the bottom of the plant at the bottom and this going up. As you're gluing it down, that might be helpful for you. This one's a little bit of a crooked line, so that's going to look a little funny, but I'm excited for it. Just, I love a little variety. I love a little variety. All right, get the perimeter of that next box, pull it up, and we'll get this one going. Oh, I got a little extra glue on there. Great. This one I'm going to buddy up next to this one in this little corner here. Might look a little funny from your side, but I think it's kind of cool. Might change my design a little bit here. It's kind of makes me feel like it should be different. What do you think about that? What do we think about that, people? Switch it up, keep it the same, move it over. Maybe that, I like that better. Okay, see, even in the last stages, sometimes there are still tested out. Because sometimes when you glue it down, things don't wiggle the same way they used to. You have to make some on-the-fly changes, and artists are the best at that. We do what we can to kind of roll with the punches. Okay, getting this last block down. Cool. Again, making sure the perimeter of each of these boxes is down. Oh, I did not get enough glue on that guy. There we go. Awesome. Y'all, we have survived. Texture towers totally complete. Um, I am so excited to see what these look like because everyone's is going to be totally different. Um, but if you wanted to explain this challenge for those of us that have a lot of kids inside and if you want a fun idea, you could do this on a bigger scale. So if you were to take a whole piece of paper and do a fun texture like this, use my scrap piece of paper, if you were to take a whole paper and do this, you could stack these if you were to take them on the wall. You could do a giant texture wall if you wanted to. That's my expandable activity. Besides that, the only thing left is a little signature right in this corner that you got all your textures complete and that this artwork belongs to you and you are all set. Thank you so much for joining me on our texture tower adventure today. Um, if you have a texture tower that you just completed, send me a picture so I can see what it is because I'm sure you did fabulous. Um, thank you so much again and have a wonderful, wonderful day wherever you are. Bye. Take care.